welcome back to the show and welcome to this edition of the our book club the social chapter today we are discussing our latest read daisy jones and the six it's written by taylor jenkins reed jess you are our social chapter president so give us a synopsis of course i will <laughs> from the moment this book hit the shelves people have been obsessing over it the book is all about a 70s rock group called daisy jones and the six we read about the highs and lows that come with living in the spotlight and at the heart of it all is this intense relationship between the two lead singers Daisy and Billy. The two butt heads fight for control but there's a lust for one another when they share the microphone. It's so sexy. It's a story that's loosely based too on Fleetwood Mac. The book is written as an oral history so it's like reading a tell-all interview. And I have a fun fact for you. I don't know if you guys know this. I only found out after I finished the book. The first character that speaks in this oral history is named Elaine Chang. She's the biographer, the fictional biographer of Daisy and she is based on none other than Elaine <gasps> Lou. Oh, no yes. way! The is author, the oh author my, really, is Lee? Taylor Jenkins Reads is obsessed as so many people are around the world oh with gosh. Lainey's blog. So and good. yeah, I, I, isn't this incredible? So good. There's a character based on Lainey. Now, so that you, now that you force people to applaud for me, let's move oh. on. <laughs> This book was the perfect page turner to enjoy with a bottle of wine. We sipped on Felix and Lucy, a new wine from France. It's made mm. with a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah, and Grenache grapes. What do you think? Oh do my you gosh. Feel We're this in the south of delish. France, Nanon. This yes, is gorgeous. This is a really bright mm. and fresh, clean flavor. It's lovely. I also feel like it has a very like passionate. <gasps> scent, which is what we get from the artists depicted in this book. It's good Ooh, yes. like, yeah. Ooh. But you know what, I think um, I love red wine, but this is a nice medium body yes. where you're, I think this is something, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, sommelier Jess, this is something that you can eat with almost anything. You can eat with almost anything, but this is good on its own. Like, I feel like I would be very happy having this yeah. without food, which you can't do with a lot of red wines. Yeah, that's that's true. And you know what, I usually prefer a white, but I yeah. love this. This is good. Yes, this is delish. It's really good. And so mm -hmm. in the book, we, uh, we read about this band on tour, yeah. so Jess, you asked each of us <laughs> what would be our go-to snack on our tour riders if we were going on tour. You were, you had very demanding riders. Yes. Uh, I brought gummy bears. Thank for you. Mercy. <laughs> Thank you. I bought crunchy cheese sticks for Lainey. Excellent. My favorite. And for Mel, very demanding ketchup chips. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Now, many of you at home shared your opinions of the book, and for the most part, people loved it. Natalie on Facebook wrote, I have read every book by Taylor Jenkins Reid, and this is her best work. Loved it so much, devoured it in 48 hours, I couldn't put it down. Definitely a five out of five review. Wow. And she's super excited to see the TV show by Reese Witherspoon. So ladies, now's the time where we find out if you agree with Natalie. You're going to defend your rating out of five. You got 20 seconds to do it. Mel, let's take let's it away. Let's do this first. Okay, so I gave this book a four out of five and here's why. I really didn't think I'd enjoy this book about a genre of music I'm not necessarily a fan of and it was an era before I was born, but I love this journey into the inner workings of a band that felt completely realistic and possible. I was swept away by Daisy as she was the girl maybe some of us dreamt of being in our early 20s, but equally pulled by the rock star's wife fighting for her family with all her might. It was the perfect read to provide an imaginary soundtrack to the summer ahead. Oh, that was good. Nice. That was good. Woo. It was really good. in there. Okay, we felt the same way, I think. I also gave this book a four out of five, and here's why. I'll be totally honest, I really wasn't into reading this book either. A story about a rock band in the 70s, sex, drugs, rock and roll, repeat, ho-hum. But <laughs> a couple pages in, it hooked me. Taylor Jenkins Reid lays this out in an oral history format, so details are weaved in like notes in a song. We hear from all the band members and get their side of the story. It's like an extended Rolling Stone interview, and hey, I really do love a good interview. Yeah. <laughs> I Lane. I gave this book a four and a half out of five, and here's why. I'm obsessed with it. I've already read it three times. During each reading, I keep picking up my phone and Googling or trying to go on YouTube to listen to the songs. These people felt so real to me. And you can't write a book like this or enjoy it without appreciating that gossip and writing gossipily is a reflection of what art can be. Thank you. Whoa! We are all 
on the same page. I also gave it a four out of five, and here's why. Because like every, like you, I was not jazzed about reading a book about s the 70s drugs and rock and roll. It's all very off-brand for moi. But then I tore through it in like three sittings on account of this genius oral history structure and finding out that Lainey is a character in this book. The only thing I didn't like was that Billy and Daisy's lyrics, which were so magical for me not knowing what they were, they were reprinted at the end of the book and it destroyed the magic for me. Ooh. That's it. Okay, everybody, hold on a second. So as we mentioned, this book is an oral history of this rock and roll band revealing all of their secrets. It's like the truth behind the tabloids. So it actually got us thinking, if we could know the oral history of any celebrity scandal, which scandal would you choose? Oh, I choose? wanna go first, I wanna go first. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so for me, and lots and lots of people, including you, it would be what really happened between Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake. Yes. Right? <laughs> So they were sweethearts, and then I know she cheated on him. Then they had like an alleged dance off. They they um, they, they now like don't talk to each other anymore. But here's the thing: Justin's entire career is based on the fact that he was the member of NSYNC who was with Britney. We would not have Justin Timberlake these days without Britney Spears. So this oral history I'm hoping for would really give Britney the credit she deserved for creating the monster known as Justin Timberlake. Whoa. Wow, wow. Love it. Wow. Uh, for me, it was Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt, and Jennifer Aniston. Remember when Jolie and Pitt did Mr. Yeah. and Mrs. Smith? Yes. And and during that press conference, it was, we're not together, we're yeah. not together, right? And they tried to stand far apart and we all knew they were together. Mm -hmm. And of course they ended up being together. What went down? Yes. What was Aniston thinking? Timeline, all timeline. All the timelines, I want all the timelines. Details, Details. Pictures. Oh gosh, remember Photos. that picture? Remember that picture of Jen Aniston and Brad walking on the beach and then they <gasps> yes. separated afterwards? Yes. And then he just landed on Angeline. Oh my gosh, I want to yes. know the whole thing. All of it, oh, there's okay, so, so much there. Okay, so after Britney and Justin, mm -hmm. there was Selena and mm -hmm. Justin. Mm -hmm. Justin Justin Bieber, that is. So this was a love story that they were so young and in love, and then you just thought, oh, there's all the possibility in the world, but they're two young, hot pop stars on the brink of massive fame. So that all fell apart, as we know, yeah. and that, unfortunately, I think will be a trilogy, a connection that those two will never be able to no. escape. Oh so I want to know the real inner workings of what went down. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. would be very yeah. good. Mine goes back to the 90s. Two best friends at the time, Winona Ryder and Gwyneth Paltrow, dating another set of two best friends, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. And the story goes that Winona Ryder has the screenplay for Shakespeare in Love, like maybe on her coffee table. Gwyneth is over. Uh, Winona maybe uses the washroom. This is how I play it out. Uh, Gwyneth picks it up <laughs> and she's like, oh, this screenplay looks amazing. Let me just call someone. Gwyneth makes some calls. She gets the part for Shakespeare in Love and goes on to win an Oscar and Winona has that shoplifting thing, like what really happened? I would love Leave to know. Leave Winona that. alone! I love <laughs> Winona. I love I, Winona. You know, I can't believe none of us picked Beyonce, Jay Z, and Solange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God! The elevator. The elevator. Oh oral history. What went on in that and elevator? How did we not pick that? I know. And she even sings about it when there's a billion dollars in the elevator. Yes. My gosh. Okay, so Reese Witherspoon is adapting this book into a TV series, as Jesse said. And the big question is, who will play Daisy and Billy? So, who would you cast for the lead roles? You're well, up, Jesse. I went, the, the author, apparently when she was writing the book, she had Ethan Hawke and Sienna Miller in her oh, head. Yeah. So after I found out that, that's all I could think of those two in the roles of, of Daisy and Billy. So that's mine. Daisy was described as one of the most beautiful women you've ever seen, with big, beautiful lips and big hoop mm -hmm. earrings. And, uh, and Billy was described as sort of like this brooding but really sexy rock star. And I saw Lily Collins and Scott Eastwood, the, mm. the son of Clint Eastwood. Yes. And she is Phil Collins' daughter, so she would come by that honestly. Mm. She would understand the music industry. She's just stunning and she's everywhere right now. And Scott, I just have a crush on him. Oh, yeah. That's good <laughs> yeah, casting. That's really him. good casting. For me, I chose Kate Hudson, almost famous yeah. is what I had in mind. Kate Hudson and Chris Evans, Captain America, oh, just because yeah. he's cute. That's good. He's nice. cute. I, I went with the most obvious, like female songwriter, male songwriter, Taylor Swift, Harry Styles. Oh, They've had like romance good. before. You know, um, there's like all kinds of feuds, <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know. Was that for Taylor Swift or Harry Styles? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to close the, the chapter here on one social chapter select, but it is now time to reveal our next book, Jess Allen.
May I have a drum roll, please? The next Soul Search Doctor selection is The Farm by Joanne Ramos. This is a story about women, mostly immigrants, who serve as surrogates for wealthy clients. They must live at a luxury retreat called The Farm for the duration of their pregnancy where they are paid for their services. The women are watched and monitored at all times, have a prescribed diet and exercise plan they must adhere to. The book poses the question, how much of ourselves are we willing to sell? Okay, everybody, we want you to join along with us. We're going to be talking about this book next month. Everyone in our studio audience, you're getting your book today. <laughs> All right, everybody, share your thoughts about this book with us. Use the hashtag, the social chapter. We'll see you after this break. Cheers. <laughs>